Hello, everybody, and welcome into PGR Esports Live from the high banks of Talladega Super Speedway. And it is the Intimidator Super Speedway Series that is making our turn here tonight, but we're in a bit of a different car than what we're used to seeing. It was the ARCA cars last week, and this week we are in the Cup Series. Thank you all so much for tuning in. You are watching Austin Green on Ghost, or excuse me, on PGR Esports. Of course, last time we were out, we were on Ghost Racing Network. Don't have any of the usual co-hosts in the booth here tonight. Dawson at Talladega. Hope he's having a good time. And our normal co-host slash race control, Matthew Baker, is actually down on the track. And so as he gets ready to roll and put in some work here tonight, we will get right into your starting group. Taking the pole, it is going to be Alex Hill for Dale Cup in the 77 machine. He puts down a 52.955. Garrett Means roll off second on the outside. First Coke Series driver in the field here tonight. Kevin Freeze back in third. Matt Lee in fourth with Matthew Baker in fifth. Jeff Merck, six. Tony Cox, good qualifying effort again for him. He will roll off in seventh. Trevor Osmanoff in eighth. John Ward for Hyper Motorsports. He will start in ninth after getting the job done last week. And Zach Range rounding out your top ten. Andrew Navarro starts in 11th. Jason Maines back in 12th. Row number seven, Sean Corbett and John Mullahan. Nash Bramilla starts 15th. David Sheets from McCullough Motorsports to his outside in 16th. J.R. Miller back in 17th. Mark Vondell, 18th. Christopher Carter in 19th with Brian Watson rounding out your top 20. Joshua Watson starts 21st. Devin Ray in 22nd. Brock Westman in 23rd. Mike Davenport back in 24th. It's going to be Ron Morris Jr. in 25th. Jimmy Emos, good qualifying effort for him in 26th. Dylan Jones back in 27th. Logan York for Blind Score Racing in 28th. Joshua McCullough, 29th. And Heath Job. Rounding out your top 30. Christopher McCullough in 31st. Ken McCullough Jr. in 32nd. Tyler Vickery, 33rd. Jeremy Osborne in 34th. And rounding out the field tonight for Blind Score Racing, it's Tucker McClendon. He will start in 35th. Looking at your race breakdown here tonight. Again, it is the Intimidator Super Speedway Series here for PGR Esports in the NASCAR Cup Series tonight. 55 laps, the scheduled distance, 55% er, fuel, which we believe can get you maybe somewhere probably right around, if I had to guess, I'm going to say right around 20 laps. Maybe give or take a couple, maybe a couple more, maybe 20 to 22 is the expected window. And we'll go over more of that here as the race gets going. Unlimited tires, no fast repair here tonight. Fix setups as always, and three green-white checkers if we were to need them. Talladega Super Speedway, 2.65 miles in length. A lot wider than what we see at Daytona International Speedway. Starting track temp, 137 degrees. Weather outside, 87. 30% humidity, clear skies, and winds at 2 miles an hour. All right, pace car going to roll off onto the pits for the first time here tonight. Again, this is one of those cars, love-hate relationship. A lot of guys love it, a lot of guys hate it. And you're going to see the separation 
of who does and who doesn't enjoy this car here pretty quickly. A lot of pushing, a lot of shoving, and a lot, gr a lot of great two and three wide action. Here we go. Green flag in the air. We're racing at Talladega. Lap one complete here at Talladega, and it does go to the 04 machine of Matt Lee with a push from his teammate, Alex Hill. Those two working really good together right now, but talked about the aggression level and being shown early. Big block from Matt Lee doesn't work out. Garrett Main splits him high. That's going to force Lee to jump back down just in front of Alex Hill again, as we saw Kevin Freeze actually jump out of line a little bit there down the back. He went below the apron, shuffled back a few spots, and looked like was able to get it gathered back up. Now, a lot of aggression there from Mains, but, you know, kind of aggression that was like almost setting the territory to a degree. Says, hey, listen, you're not going to do that to me here early. Way too early to be doing that. I've got to run. I was there. If you're going to try to block me, I'm going to be splitting you all night. So this guy is letting each other know what turns they're on pretty quick. But, I mean, look at the separation. And this is what you get with these next-gen cars, and it's because of the way they drive and how different that is from any of the other series we go to. Notice up top here, Jeff Merck, Garrett Mains doing a lot of pushing. As now Jeff jumps low a lane to cool and try to get a side draft off the bottom. Oh, now John Ward gets out of shape. That was a big push from Andrew Navarro that got him sideways. And Navarro, though, showing that if you can tandem and you can do it effectively, the ground it can allow you to make is now the 42 will jump up top. Looking for a run from either Lee or Osronoff. Lee not clear. Now he gets split to the middle again. And Matt Lee showing a lot of aggression here early as, again, everybody kind of trying to figure these cars back out. We don't do them often. Now Range gets up into the door of Alex Hill. Single file for the first five to seven rows. Double wide and then three wide here for two. Make it three rows. Is now going to get a little bit more help here from looks like the 59 of Mark Vondell. And he jumped to the middle for a minute but didn't stick there long. And now watch for maybe that 77 to think about jumping back up here. And so far it doesn't look like Matt Lee's been able to get back to his bumper. And so now that Andrew Navarro leads the top, I think maybe this gives us second here. In fact, we're going to actually go to Nash from Villa first. And here's a ride on the gearbox or out of the back, if you will, showing you just how crazy everything is. But I want to go to an onboard view here for somebody who's got one of the more important jobs of doing all the pushing. And right now that is Trevor Osmanoff on the back of Andrew Navarro. The goal of these cars is pretty simple. When you want to go somewhere, you lock up and you push as hard as you can. There's no real limit to how far. Oh, well, hold on just a minute. Yellow flag is out. Trouble in the back. Oh, reckon two, three around. Mark Von Dell under the grass. The 60 of Merck slides to a halt. Looks like that is the 01 of Joshua Watson involved, as was the 77 of Alex Hill. Joshua Watson was one of our driver cams here tonight. So you hate to see him getting caught up in an incident early. As we do go to his driver cam, there's a look as he gets his back roll. I'm not sure exactly. Oh. Yikes, that car is destroyed, and so unfortunately, this is going to bring an end to the 01's night here pretty quickly. Man, didn't even get a chance to bring him up yet. Joshua Watson had a teammate in here tonight, of course, with Brian, but it's like Brian's going to be a solo runner now after this. I mean, that car is junk. He hit something, and he hit it hard. You see the head nod there. He's not happy about it, and again, you can't blame him. A lot of optimism coming into tonight, and you know, the no fast pair, it, it poises that risk, and well, i tell you what, as a driver, if it's an incident that's not your fault, especially this early, it's so frustrating because you're just saying to yourself, I mean, what are we doing here, guys? We don't have a fast pair, and we're doing this here on just the first 10 laps, and sometimes that's just what happens, the aggression these next-gens bring to the table, but let's see what starts this whole thing here. I think it's going to be a little bit of a move and kind of a run merging together and not quite merging in the right way here. I saw John Ward as kind of the first car that looked like he got out of shape, got a little bit sideways here. 
And so we're going to go to the zoomed in view first. So you see he's got Zach Range behind him. Here comes Alex Hill up top with a big run. Ward's going to try to jump up top. Now, Matt Lee is pretty tight on the bumper, and Alex says, okay, well, if you're going to make that move, I'm going to give you a shove here. And Ward just thinks line up a little bit late there is... Looked like he was maybe going to get a little high anyway, but then once Alex got there and hit him, that of course shoved the 92 up even further. Mark Vondel gets into him, and then from that point sends the 92 back down the racetrack. That sends Alex Hill down into Zach range, and then Rex on from here as he comes back up the track, and it's going to be just a lot of guys here that have absolutely nowhere to go. So it did look like the good news, I guess, for John Warther is he did sneak through, but then behind, I mean, this was carnage here. Quite a few big shots taken as we're going to get a little bit more of a zoomed out view of this. Watch again here. He jumps up. Boom. There's the shove and then there's the contact with Zach Range back up the track. Huge hit for Hill and oh man well, I didn't notice it at the time and unfortunately it wasn't just Joshua Watson that was involved but it was also his teammate Brian Watson so for JBRE Racing man that's a tough tough start to the night get a couple other angles of this and it's just, you know, again, like I said, the, these cars, it's been A-fixed all week, right? So a lot of these guys, John Ward, a lot of others, Alex, so they've had the chance to get some practice races and the aggression level, it's high. But, you know, there's a lot of money on the line tonight, and I just don't know if it's worth making those kind of moves this early when we knew that we were granted for a green flag pit stop. And it's not necessarily a bad move by John Ward, but it's just you got to know that if you make that move in that case, Alex is probably not going to cut you a break and. If you go up there and you get tapped and it sends you sideways, you got to know that there could be a pretty big incident to follow. That's exactly what happened here. Again, for anybody that's just tuning in here or anybody that's still kind of figuring out exactly what we're talking about here, watch again. We'll go to the onboard view for Alex Hill here. You can push in these cars. However, there's still limits. You can push in the corners, but you got to get a guy square and you don't want to slam him too hard, but there it is. John gets up a little high. Alex hits him a little offset left and then... It's just on from there. Give you one more look at this here from the drone cam. Sitting in the trial. Boom. Into Zach range. Back up the track. Man, we're lucky not to get clipped again. And then the two JBRE racing teammates there, Josh and Brian Watson, they chose to go to the outside and just unfortunately unlucky. That's all it really was there is that's where Alex Hill ended up. And then behind here, you see Brock Westman. He gets going for a slide. Saw Jeff Merck as well as a lot of guys going through the grass to try to miss this one. Looks like most of them do. That was Ron Morris Jr. along with Dylan Jones in the 11. He saw going by on the inside. So as we go back live, a lot of damaged cars still sitting in the pits for the moment. But up front, it is Andrew Navarro leading on the inside. Trevor Osinoff on the outside. Nash Brambilla back in third. Kevin Freeze in fourth. David Sheets currently rounding out your top five. Only seven of 55 laps completed up to this point. And so still a long, a long ways to go rather and a lot of things to happen. But as it stands here, I don't think the aggression level is going to cool down, at least not much. Now, for what it's worth, you know, of course, I had the chance as well to race in these a little bit this week. And it's just such a fun car to drive i mean the runs are just incredible the amount of pushing you can do is unlike any of the other series in terms of the amount of progress you can make and there's never really a point with like what we might see in either last week or the xfinity series or the truck series where there's really ever a gridlock there's always an opportunity to make a move somewhere and there's always somebody to try to go with to get to the front now we've already seen a lot of three wide I haven't seen anybody dare to take it four wide just yet I don't think we're necessarily too far from that point, at least at the moment. Again, for anybody just tuning in as well, we certainly appreciate you being here watching the Intimidator Super Speedway Series on PGR Esports. Matthew Baker down on the track and Dawson Wise in Talladega getting ready for the race weekend. So that is why they are not either one of those two rather are joining us. But we may hear from series owner Michael Trescaro in a little bit as there is Matthew Baker gets ready to get the green flag again as they roll into the trioval. Field in the hands of Navarro and Oswald off. Green flag green is flag back in the air flag. at Talladega. Green 
great start for both rows, but already three wide as it's John Ward. In the 92, the Hyper Motorsports captain looking up top, and he is not going to get any takers. May have been by design there to fall to the back. Either way, that's where he's going. As Andrew Navarro continues to lead on the bottom of the racetrack up front, but Osrodov getting a huge shove by Kevin Freeze was hoping to get clear, and it's going to be by plenty. We'll see if the 89 chooses to jump down, and if he doesn't, does the 25 think about doing it himself? Here comes Matthew Baker in the middle. He's got a good run here with Garrett Maines. Those two, a lot of chemistry in the next gens. They may not be direct teammates, but I'm telling you, they know how to get the job done in this car at this kind of track. And so, we'll see if they jump down. If they get clear here, do they stay in the middle? Usually the middle place is kind of no man's land in just about any of the series, especially in the next gens. But if you've got the right pushers, in this case, Garrett Maines behind you, there's a good chance you can make it work. And they do just that. They'll get clear of Andrew Navarro. Lee's not quite able to get clear. As, ooh, man, close call. Oh, Jimmy Emos on the back bumper there of Matt Lee. Almost got him hooked around. Now they're wrecking out back. Davenport hard to the outside wall. Only two cars, but it does draw the caution. As the 55 heavy front end hit. Damage doesn't look like it matches up quite to the impact, but that right front is certainly banged up. Cockpit view, he may not have broken any suspension parts, but certainly enough to come in and fix some of that aero damage and hope that he didn't get any engine damage in the process as well. As just saw Davenport really involved, like I said, with just one other car. I couldn't tell, was it, was it Christopher Carter here? It may have been. And yeah, that would looks like it may have very well been here. So actually I take that back. Sorry, that is not Chris Carter. That is gonna be looks like Christopher McCullough here. And this was Nope. Again, I take that back even again. Sorry, it was indeed Christopher Carter. I accidentally went back to the last caution. I thought I saw the bright orange car. And so this is gonna be coming off of turn number two. We're gonna go to the chopper view first off. And watch this here. As Carter well, again, not really sure what we're doing back here, making a move to the outside when we're already fading back from the pack for 20, 30th place. But, you know, certainly inclined to make that move if you feel it's the right one to be done. And Christopher Carter feels like he needs to jump to the outside here. And when he does, I just I don't know. Does he just not jump out far enough? Does he hit him? What happens here? I mean, see the 20s coming up on him as he jumps out here. Davenport's going low, and then I think it's just that he, when he pulls out of line, he's just so close to his right rear that he just he, he taps him. Uh, man, maybe not even, actually. There may have been a slight bit of net code. There, you just can't tell. It's so close. I mean, certainly close enough to where contact was possible, but it, it almost doesn't look like Chris ever touches him. And we're going to go see if we can get a view here from the left front cam. Again, I don't think Chris actually quite hits him until they, until the 55 gets around right there. Now, at that point, the 55 had already started to almost get turned, if you will. But Chris wasn't touching him. So I do think there was just a little bit of net code right there between the 55 and the 20. And once they get hooked together here, it's just along for the ride for Mike Davenport. Huge shot into that outside safer barrier. As Carter, kind of like a snowplow, pushes him along the way. And then the 20 is able to back off, get around him. I don't know how bad the damage is going to be on that 20 machine. Mike Davenport certainly getting the worst of this one. But it did happen in the back, so luckily he doesn't collect anybody else. See a couple others there. I believe that was Christopher McCullough jumped down. Give you a couple more angles of this one here on the exit of turn number two. Remember, no fast repairs, so if Mike Davenport feels like this damage is bad enough, then there's a chance it could bring his night to an end. If nothing else, certainly got to think he gets it repaired. I don't know if it's going to be night ender. Usually with these cars, you know, a lot of guys refer to them as tanks. That's because as long as you don't break one of those delicate suspension parts, they hold up pretty well regardless of the amount of damage you get. I mean... I've seen already plenty of guys this week just in NIS that have been able to continue and have a winning shot with well over four minutes of damage. So Mike Davenport, little guy series champion, got the job done on Monday. So still playing with a little bit of house money to a degree. 
Because, of course, he got 350 bucks on Mondays, but certainly would have liked to tack onto that tonight with a good finish, but doesn't look like it's going to go down that way. And so now, as we go back up front, you got Matthew Baker leading the way, Garrett Maines in second, Trevor Osmanoff in third with Kevin Freeze in fourth, John Mullahan back in fifth, Brock Westmoreland in sixth, J.R. Miller seventh with Jeff Merck in eighth, David Sheets ninth, and Jason Maines currently rounding out your top 20. All right, well, while we have a chance here, let's go through a couple more of the driver cams that we haven't necessarily gone through them all yet tonight. And so I know we took a stop here once, but again on your leader, Matthew Baker in the five machine. That is the driver out of Magnolia, Texas. We saw Joshua Watson, by the way, who still sits on the pits currently with damage. And that going on back to one of his MBG teammates here, Jeff Merck. These two have been working together already tonight. They're going to see if they can continue that chemistry as we continue to go through this race. Trevor Osmanoff talked about a guy that loves to win anytime we go to one of the special series events, if you will, for PGR. And looks like he chose... A good night to be running good because we're in a special series. That means Trevor Osnod has probably a pretty good shot at capturing another win here tonight. We'll see how things pan out, though, of course. And then just now hopping in driver cams as well. A little bit late to the party, if you will. But it is the 22 machine of Tyler Vickery, driver out of Orlando. And one of the newer additions, at least in alliance with, not sure if it's official, but at least in alliance with Team PGR, or PGR Esports, rather, for now. Looking to see what kind of run he can put up tonight. And then Tony Cox, as always, one of the fan favorites and one of the guys that always carries a driver cam for us. He had a great qualifying effort tonight, by the way, as we'll get to him here in just a moment. But, yeah, I mean, nonetheless, phenomenal qualifying effort in the run so far. Not bad. 21st. Down a couple or a couple handfuls, rather, positions where he started this race. But, again, still a long ways to go. A lot of things to happen. So, we'll see if Tony can... Maybe get himself towards the front of the field before this thing's all said and done. And then last but certainly not least, Zach Range giving us some multiple different camera angles here tonight. In fact, he's got three set up. And there you see everything that's doing a lot of work all the way from the pedals to the steering wheel and then showing you the broader view there. So keeping an eye on Zach Range as this race goes on. He's going to be doing a lot of work. You see he's using the Formula One wheel as he gets ready for this restart. All right, here we go. Matthew Baker rolling down into second gear as we roll up into the Geico restart zone. Green flag is back in the air. It's a good restart for Matthew Baker. Garrett Maines, I think this was a little bit organized right here as I think you're going to see the five jump up. Sure enough, there he goes. So Matthew Baker, Garrett Maines, I think they might be content to actually cruise around a little bit up top. As you see, it's Kevin Freeze up there as well. That's two teammates and that one guy who has worked very closely with these two before. So... Don't know that we're going to see too much aggression. I think especially with those top three, going to kind of try to be the Pied Piper of Talladega here for a little bit. And if they are indeed able to keep everybody in sync, we may have a chance still to get to that green flag pit stop. As now, of course, we would only be expecting one. Can make it to probably about, let's say, 33, maybe 35. You come into pit. It's a little close, but it still should be a one-stopper from this point. Jason Maines further back, ducking to the inside line, looking for a side draft there on J.R. Miller. And he gets one to work, and it looks like he's going to get some help from Jeff Merck. Ooh, Jeff thought about it. Quickly thought better of it as he jumps back up into the outside line. Single file, dragging line now all the way back to the 89 of Trevor Osanoff. So that's back to about 17th position. There you see the 22, Devin Ray, one of the KSR teammates in that group as well. as He's going to try to find a spot just behind Christopher Carter. And then Mike Davenport able to return on the racetrack relatively unscathed again. You know what this hard of a hit is? It seemed like he took. Jeremy Osborne for blind score racing. Good to see him out here tonight. That is the man that's actually in the 41. I thought earlier it was Jimmy Emos, but Jimmy Emos is actually indeed in the, looks like set the 67, potentially here tonight. Apologies for that mix up. Still all single file up front as they're gonna be coming across the line here. It'll be 15 laps complete fastest track in all of racing and that single file line generates a lot of energy and that's really where you're going to see guys running their fastest speeds of the night here depending on how much pushing everybody's willing to do now that hot track temp certainly not helping anything but here we go 
down the backstretch with a push from Garrett Maines. The speed that Matthew Baker and Garrett Maines get up to almost 204 miles an hour as they get into turn number three. Now, of course, a little bit faster than what they see these guys run in real life and what they will run in real life, of course, this weekend. But there's that scorching track temp, 138, that is, again, responsible for what's going to be a lot of struggle, especially on old tires as we get through the night. But right now, everybody doing just fine. I'm going to give a quick shout-out to anybody tuning in. Currently, Shirley Cox says, good luck, Tony. Mark Vondel says, my night is done early. Let's go McCullough Motorsports. I hate to see that, Mark, after, of course, being involved in that first wreck. And Logan York says, Alex Hill wrecked again. Alex Hill wrecked again. Good luck, Logan, says Mark Vondelli. says, thank you, sir. And so, well, what was this here? Said This was, by the way, a little while ago. This is why we're taking a view. This was under before we had the last yellow. Oh, ooh. Ouch. Didn't even see that one. I believe he was getting pushed. Was that by Ron Morse Jr.? Yeah, it was here. This was into the travel, and Ron's just going to... Yeah, honestly, just kind of get to the wrong side here of 77 and then just hooks him dead nuts into the fence here. I mean, this is a huge shot. And Alex Hill not going to be too happy with that one. You can't blame him there. It looked like he was just riding and not sure what happened. But again, that was before we had that last caution. So we, of course, appreciate that insight there, Logan. Down the back straight away they go. Garrett Main still on the back bumper of Matthew Baker. Kevin Fries third in that line. And I know I keep saying it, and I'm going to continue to keep saying it. I just don't think you're going to see any movement from those three as long as they can stay in control. Now, what's going to help them is exactly what we're seeing right here. Three wide as J.R. Miller falls through the sucker hole in the middle. As now he gets some help from Trevor Osrenoff in the 89. But the one of Jason Maines on the bottom, he's going to be able to get rolling here if that middle fades away. But if they stay, well, like what they're doing now where Jeff Merck's going to bail on the one, it's going to be hard for really either lane to make any ground and that top's just going to continue to keep control. But everybody's trying to fight for any track position they can get now. And all in kind of a desperation setup. Well, it's not really desperate yet because we still have plenty of time. But all in a setup, if you will, for that final green flag pit stop that we're expecting right around lap 33 to 35. Jason Main still on the bottom. Jeff Merck in the middle. And Matthew Baker up top. Three by three is now Jeff Merck's going to jump back to the bottom. He gets clear. Watch to see what Jason Maines can do here as he'll line the 60 up off of turn number four. It looks like they're actually not going to get linked up just yet. The middle certainly is. Trevor Osmanoff on the back bumper here of J.R. Miller for just a moment. But up top, you know, another thing to keep an eye on here is, you know, right now I know everybody's just riding, but this could very well be how we see the setup of the move to win the races in terms of... You know, on that last lap, and again, we saw this in Podium. We saw this in a couple other series. We'll hold that thought for just a second. Big run on the bottom, J.R. Miller. And that dark horse, Ford Mustang, almost was able to draw even with Matthew Baker. Now Baker's actually going to jump to the bottom. Big stack up. Osmanoff has to bail. And the 78 is going to lose his run. Trevor Osmanoff, I'm assuming it was just a stack up there, and he felt, or maybe didn't feel comfortable, rather, in terms of thought, the checkup was going to be a little bit too big, so he went ahead and just bailed out of it. Fell right to back, and he's got to be careful here. He might lose this draft. Looks like he's kind of acting as a bridge car, if you will, between what was the first pack and the second pack. So I think he's going to be okay, but let's back this up and see what caused him. Was it the move from Baker just causing a stack up, or did he maybe not like what he saw here with something? Watch it from the chopper view. So he's getting pushed by Logan York here. And into J.R. Miller, that three-car tandem, that's a lot of energy, a lot of speed. And, and then right here, it's just a stack-up. He, he reads that the stack-up's coming, and he knows that it's going to be a lot bigger than what he's going to be able to handle here. And yeah, just kind of gets pushed out of line, half bails. And unfortunately, the trouble doesn't stop there. This is live right now for Trevor Osrenoff as he has lost the draft and... Can't tell if he's got any damage, but you see the head shake. He says, give me a break. What are we doing here? And I saw his hands in the wheel just go out of shape here. What, what happens? I mean, he fell back to the second pack, and they go around. No issues, and then here comes Davenport. And uh, looks like Davenport just hooks him into the outside wall. That'll give Trevor some damage. 
And I gotta believe that Mike was just trying to duck in line behind Trevor right here, but boy, he misjudges it pretty bad as it wasn't really even that close. And that's significant contact there. Watch it back one more time here. Let's see if we can go to the chopper view. Watch this here. Davenport, yeah, I think he just misjudges it and just hooks Trevor right around into the outside safer barrier. All right, so Trevor's going to the pits for some repairs. All of a sudden, what was looking like a great run has gone bad here in a hurry. Meanwhile, back up front, Baker has found his rhythm back on the outside with help from Garrett Maines, Kevin Freeze, and John Mullahan. The mad scramble is on out back. The inside, though, at least for the first two or three, was starting to look organized here, but Jeff Merck's going to bail off high, and that'll put J.R. Miller and Logan York by themselves. Now Logan bails high as well. So it's just J.R. Miller on the bottom looking for any help, whether it's a teammate or just anybody at this point. It's going to come in the form of John Ward here, who had a big run. He's got to check it up. Oh, he turns Miller. Does Miller save it? He does. Good save there from J.R. Miller as he comes back up. Ward cuts him a break. Just got him in a bad spot right there. Talk about you can do pushing, but you still got to be careful in certain spots. Now, one of those areas, of course, it, what we see in pretty much any of the series is right on the exit of the corner. That's where that car unloads and where you can have a lot of issues. But a nice save there from J.R. Miller. Bottoms got lined back up, and they're getting ready to get back to moving here. Zach Range with a push from Jason Maines. And that middle is still trying to get a run going in itself here as it's Devin Ray pushing Matt Lee. Now Logan York's going to drop down John Mullahan as well. And all these guys looking to kind of either stall that run out or maybe try to make a move and try to make some headway here towards the front of the pack. On board now here with Logan York for just a minute, but we're going to go over a, ro a road down, if you will, a lane down to Zach Range. As you see the onboard view and talk about a lot going on there, but how about the feet? Just about as much going on if you're behind somebody. Right now he's in the lead, so he's got a pedal to the floor. And now, here we go. That is behind Christopher McCullough. Watch the footwork here. He's going to be using those pedals a little bit more as they see lips off the throttle a little bit as he gets to his back bumper. And now, once he's lined up, he'll put the hammer back down and try to get back going. Meanwhile, up front, Matthew Baker with the best view in the house. Doesn't have to worry about any traffic. Garrett going to cool off a little bit here on the entry to turn number three. And boy, they've just, they're doing such a good job. It's like a, almost a roadblock here in these next gens. Heard guys talking about it in practice. And, you know, we've seen this before in series such as Podium 500. Uh, I say series races, rather, such as the Podium 500. Of course, the Omega Cup race, where if you get on that top lane and you've got, we'll say, three or four really good pushers behind you, all you've really got to do is jump down, side draft when they got to run and keep the guy in second cool. And if you do that, it's really, really difficult for that bottom lane to get enough of a run to actually get by and get clear. That's why we usually see a lot of three wide action, but as lined up as they are, I just don't think they're going to stay that way for the entirety of this race. There's quite a bit of money on the line here tonight to first, and I don't know if Garrett, Kevin, and Mullahan are just comfortable with sitting there and letting this thing finish this way, but still got a pit stop to go, and they still have 30 laps when they cross the stripe this time. Navarro on the bottom now with Devin Ray. And again, you saw them try to make a go at it. Now, one thing I will say is there's not enough commitment right now really going on on the bottom. I mean, we talked about the top three on the top with Baker, Mains, and Kevin being committed. And that's obviously part of that equation of why it's working. But everything that we've seen develop on the bottom or the middle, it's just too much shuffling guys in and out. Nobody really wanting to stay committed to a lane long enough to keep that momentum generated and ultimately have enough to get by. Is It's going to be a lapper here of Tucker McClendon as he's going to duck low. Ducks well out of the way, but now they get three wide yet again, and this time it's Jeff Merck who's going to be going to the back. Does anybody jump out to pick him up? Doesn't look like it, at least not yet. Heath Joe thought would maybe think about it. Doesn't look like it, and it's going to be Logan York instead. Cuts a break to the 60, and he'll catch him here at the back end of this draft and try to jump or drop those two back in line. There's Sean Corbett in the 45, just a couple spots in front of them. Tyler Vickery in the 35. Brock Westmalin, great run for all those cars, including Jeremy Osborne in the 41 and Dylan Jones as well. And now here's where you got to be careful. And this is exactly the other way that you can beat that outside or that things can start to shuffle. And that's when you have what Lee just did to John Mullahan right there. And that's as soon as they go down the side draft, jump to that outside and pick off a couple. And now this sets up a big run here for Zach Range and Matt Lee. Will they jump to the middle? 
or do they stay up top? And now, if you're Garrett Maines, Kevin Freeze, Matthew Baker, do you even jump down the side draft or do you stay where you are? And it looks like the front ones are going to slowly work their way down. Zach Range will follow in tow. But I'm telling you, Lee's going to keep doing that. There he goes again. Followed by David Sheets. That's the move Lee is going to continue to make on these guys until somebody brings a halt to it. And so Kevin Freeze is going to try his best to defend it. But, oh, Lee's going to get him with that same move as well. Matt Lee showing a lot of aggression here, but it continues to pay off as, again, picks up another spot here. Freeze is going to be able to retain that position, though, as Lee did not get the run he needed at all. David Sheets was not quite to his back. But, oh, David Ray gets turned. Oh, he saves it. He's trying to save it. Looks like he does here. Still has to blend back onto the track and try to hold on to the draft. Wow, what a save from Devin Ray. Man, all out of shape here. We're going to go back to the cockpit view. I think he just gets turned from out back. And then, boy, we know once that happens, it's so hard to save it. So here you go. Garrett Maines is pushing as hard as he can. Trying to help these two make some progress. But unfortunately, he just gets him on the exit of the corner. Wow, that is a fantastic save by Devin Ray. I mean, he was headed for the inside wall, then the outside wall, and somehow didn't hit any of it. Fortunately, though, that did cost him the draft, so he is going to need a caution now. Probably one sooner than later to avoid going a lap down. Really aggressive now up front. Matt Lee on the outside. Nobody going with him, at least not yet. Now John Mullahan takes a look. Kevin Freeze pushing Garrett Maines in the middle, and it's Andrew Navarro pushing Matthew Baker on the bottom. Talked about pit stops. Ooh, Kevin Freeze and Matt Lee getting a little little physical right there down the back stretch, if you will. Lee and Freeze, I think I think they got locked together more than anything, and Freeze is out enough. He says, I'm getting out of here. I'm going to the inside. I think that's because we're seeing pit stops. Here we go. First pit stops of the night. Matthew Baker leads him in, and it really doesn't get any takers. Oh, Westmoreland locks up. Oh, uh, yikes. I think that's going to be a speeding penalty right there for Brock Westmoreland. Baker got in a little hot, too. Curious to see if he gets a penalty as well or if he was able to still get down to speed. Getting ready to find out here. As he works his way into the box. And watch for Brock Westmoreland here to do the same further back. Let's see if he's able to leave. Oh, caution is out. Up front, we got trouble here. Set up front, but a little bit more towards the middle of the pack. Who's involved? Navarro, John Mullahan. Like, was Matt Lee in that as well? Yes, he was. So that could be a huge break for Matthew Baker and Brock Westmoreland. In fact, I think it will be. They were already on the pit, so they should come out the leaders when this thing cycles through. What that does, though, is certainly makes the pit strategy pretty interesting now. So we'll get to that in just a moment. But before we do, let's see what sparks this one. So it looks like that's Matt Lee on the inside from the front of the field. What in the world happens here? This was for quite some time that Matt Lee had been out of shape here. All right, so watch the 04 here. This is getting into the corner. John Ward pushing. Ward's going to get just a little bit too far offset left right there. And then that just kind of swipes the 4 down the racetrack. You see Lee's trying to save it, which he does. And he does a great job of it right here. And now he's on the apron and holds it down. Gets a little bit loose, hits the apron again. Now he's trying to spin. He's trying to correct and look like he did. And then as he comes up, just clips Andrew Navarro and wrecks on from there. But Go to the onboard view here to see if he had a chance to maybe save this car a little bit more than what he did. It's on the apron. And... Yeah, I mean, just right at the end there, tries to merge, not clear. Can't, can't do that. I mean, you know, you hate in this case that it happened that way, but he had it saved and he had it straight. I guess I'm really not sure why he went back right, right here. I mean... Watch the wheel here. Right here, he's got it straight. Right here, he's got it straight, and just gets up the track. I mean, of course, in fairness, it's going a lot faster than this as it's happening, but just not sure if he meant to merge back up. You got to assume and hope he didn't because, again, that cost a lot of cars a chance at this one here tonight by Lee doing that. So it looked initially like a phenomenal save. But in fairness to Lee, it all gets sparked from John Ward just pushing. You know, it's doing what he's got to do, but at the end of the day, just pushes Lee a little too aggressive and pushes him down on the apron. And Jared Miller is going to be able to miss it. Garrett Maines misses it. And then Navarro is the unlucky victim as well. You know what? I might have to take this back a little bit. 
in terms of it almost looked like from that view Lee didn't even actually hit him there was a little bit of net code for sure at least with Navarro here watches the 04 blends back up I mean Lee's definitely coming up well no I think there's going to be contact there even if there's not net code it certainly looks like there's going to be and then the three and the six of John Mullahan and Christopher McCullough get taken out as well and then Lee gets up into the 760 here of Heath Job. As Job goes for a slide, I think he saves without hitting the inside while the big hits really came from Christopher McCullough and a couple others here. Once they got spun around and just went shooting towards the inside wall, nothing they could do. Watch the hits here. John Mullahan takes the biggest one, I think. Even Navarro with a pretty big shot. We'll see if that car is able to continue as there's more contact between the teammates right there. Go to the zoomed in view of this here. Watch the six car get up off the ground. Boom. Big impact there for John Mullahan. You saw the roof peek into camera view there for just a moment. And I'll give you one other angle here from TV1. Yeah, there's just usually nowhere to run here at Talladega when you get turned and pointed towards that inside safer barrier. And again, it's a shame because it brought. The end of the night, again, to quite a few strong cars that had a great chance at it. You know, we only started with less than 40 cars, which, you know, in general isn't a small field by any means, 35. But we keep taking this many out and start to become a race of attrition. And realistically, we may not have that many running by the time this thing is all said and done. Give you one more view here from the gearbox of Matt Lee. Or rather, Andrew Navarro, excuse me. Christopher McCullough get it right the third time nonetheless back up front though Lee making a stop in his box 23 laps to go and talked about fuel mileage and how interesting it's gonna be right here see who's gonna be able to make it the entirety of the way from here and who feels like they aren't let's see if we can get a word here with one of the guys who's been up front for just about all this race in a different car though we're just seeing Zach range let's see how he's feeling right now Hey, Zach Range, this is Austin up in the booth. You got a copy? Yes, sir. How about you? All right. Well, so far, so good, man. We see that you got the three cams set up, and the pedals have been a lot more busy tonight than maybe what they're used to being here in these next gens. And, I mean, kind of break that down for us here just a little bit. This car much different than what we're used to seeing. How's it felt out there tonight? It feels actually pretty good. Um, I did both uh, the NIS races yesterday. I got P3 and the NIS fixed. And then in the uh, NIS open, I had uh, actually Logan York and Kenny Real with me. So uh, we led most of the laps. It was great, and you know, till the end, and uh, everybody wrecked. It's, it's the same as money racing. <laughs> Certainly is in that aspect. Well, now there's some strategy to be played here. 23, going to be 22 laps to go. How are you feeling about your fuel mileage, and what's the game plan here? I'm saving as much as I can, and uh, the game plan is to just stay up front, stay in the money positions, and see how this plays out, and uh, make the final move at the right moment. Sounds good. Well, we appreciate you talking to us. Good luck the rest of the way, and see if we're talking to you at the end of this thing. Thank you very much. You have a good broadcast. You as well. Well, have a good race, I guess I should say, but nonetheless, Zach Range getting ready for yet another restart third caution not too bad all things considered here tonight but you know that in reality it's only going to get more aggressive from here how about sean corbett up front on the inside we roll back into the geico restart zone green flag is green, back green, in green. the air at talladega as the engines roar back to life it is matthew baker and john wood who are going to be linked up a little bit better here does jeff Merck stick with corbett or does he split him to the middle looks like for now he's going to stick with that 45 car through turn one and two, though, the outside already starting to prevail. Now, keep note of that move that Matt Lee had been using on a lot of the field. I'm curious to see if anybody else, potentially Garrett Maines, tries to do the same here, if he's committed to sticking behind Ward and Baker. Of course, that move being where if you're up in that top line and they go down to either side draft or they just leave a lane higher open, split into the top. Oh, Range gets himself in an awkward spot. Four wide. Oh, back to three. Man, that was almost catastrophe for this little group back here, which is now starting to fade away from the front group. It's a lot of guys that need to get their act together here, and they need to get it together soon because the front 10 or so are starting to create some separation. 21 laps to go. Matthew Baker still leading the way. Talked about saving fuel, and I agree with Range. It's 
it's got to be pretty close. And I, I wonder if you're leading, if you're Matthew Baker in this case, I don't know if you can make it. And I wonder if that's part of the reason that we're seeing so many guys single file out here and kind of be, be content, if you will, with single filing out. Just as I say, that looks like Andrew Navarro in the 42 is going to jump to the bottom. He wants to get some track position, but not going to get any takers here. He'll fall back potentially behind Kevin Freeze. Christopher Carter looking to fill that void between the 25 and what was the 42. And here's that second pack right now being led by the 760. Heath Joe in the middle, Mike Davenport on the bottom, and Matt Lee up top. Matt Lee now as Jason Maines in front of him here, going to give him a big push. Causes a bit of a stack up, but that should get this top lane back rolling again. That's what they need, and they need it soon because, again, talked about that front group has now pulled just about out of drafting range. It's still really close, about 1.4. Well, now officially over 1.5 seconds, so they are no longer getting a draft off this front pack. However, if Matt Lee can push Jason Maines smooth. Oh, Reckon out front. Reckon trouble. One around onto the backstretch. Couldn't tell if they hit the inside wall. Who was that? So one get out of shape. Still can't tell exactly who it was. Tucker McClendon, no. Man, I'm not sure who that was that got spun right there. We'll figure it out, but man, what in the world happened here? We'll back this up. Go to the blimp cam. I got to think this will maybe give us anything we need to know. So who was it? Oh, I think that's Jeff Merck. I think that was the 60 indeed of Jeff Merck, and I don't know if he saved this one here. As he got turned towards that inside wall, and usually when you do, it doesn't end well. What gets him turned around, though? Thought he was running in a spot where he was going to be okay just kind of riding for now. And See, there's a bit of a checkup here. Yeah, pretty good little checkup there between the 20 of Chris Carter and the 60 of Jeff Merck. Merck gets him just a little bit in the rear bumper. No issue. And then as the 20, no, it what? Well, no, it is Merck. So actually what it is is once that checkup kind of occurs, I mean, the gap no longer is really there. I'm assuming Merck's trying to let him back in, but... It's more or less that the 20 actually isn't quite clear behind the 25 than it is he's clear in front of the 60. I think he's okay in front of Merck. It's that more or less he's not quite clear behind the 25 there of Kevin Freeze. And so when he does that, it causes a stack up, gets Merck into the outside wall. Zach Range is trying to duck low, but fortunately he runs into the left rear of the 60 of Jeff Merck. And Merck's going to go for a slide towards that inside wall and not going to miss it. Tags it. Doesn't look like the damage is too bad, and he did get back rolling, but... Fortunately, he is now going to need a caution as he rides by himself well behind the pack. In fact, if we look at the track map, there you see almost half a track behind the pack to be exact. So tough break there for Jeff Merck. But as we go back up front, everybody is now wrapping the bottom, at least up front. And I think that's because these guys are all trying to see if they can pull away from that group behind. And so everybody up front as it stands right now, single file just about. Jason Maines, Matt Lee, Keith Jobe, and David Sheets have broken away from what is forming to be up a third group. Broken away, but maybe not quite pulled away. I think that group's going to be able to stick with their draft and maybe catch back up. But really curious to see if this group's got enough to catch up to Andrew Navarro and everybody else up front right here. Right now, the gap is about 1.7 seconds. Boy, Lee has got Jason really, really close here to getting back into this draft. Again, once you get into about 1.5 seconds, that's where you're back within drafting range. As Kevin Freeze and Andrew Navarro just continue to play it patient. Now Dylan Jones is going to work back up to the top here of Ken McCullough Jr. A couple of them dart off on the apron, and you wonder if them going two by two like this, shortening up that front pack, if they can still stay pretty fast, might allow them to stretch that gap quicker. And yeah, looks like that's the case. The other thing is that Matt Lee has to cool down. He can't stay on the back bumper of Jason Maines forever. Of course, that car would blow up. And, you know, I think the best thing you can do is cycle. By the way, I said that was Heath Job in this pack. It was actually the 72 of Tony Cox. Heath Job is back in that third pack. But, oh, one off. Hold your breath. That was Tony Cox who we were just talking about as this second group has now made enough leeway to catch up to these guys. And so now that could take the lead away from Jason Maines as it's Christopher Carter who goes to the top with a push from Zach Range. Range and Carter have been working pretty good together to get back up here. Oh, big stack up. Oh, my goodness. Do they all save it? They do. As David Sheets, and I believe was that Trevor Osmanoff, had to sort it out out back as well. And this group quickly back to two by two aggressive racing, and that just continues to cost them time on the leaders. Boy, if they stay that aggressive, though, they may not have to worry about times. They make it a caution within their pack. 
again with how aggressive they're racing, at least for the moment. But up front, Dylan Jones was able to get there with help from Kevin Fries and Andrew Navarro, who sits second and third. Garrett Maines back and fourth. Logan York in fifth. Joshua McCullough sixth with Ken McCullough Jr. in seventh. Matthew Baker eighth. John Ward in ninth. And J.R. Miller rounding out your top ten. A couple more people tuning in. Charles Miller says, good luck to my real brother, J.R. Miller. Absolutely good to see you out here watching, Charles. We certainly appreciate it. And J.R. Miller at the moment is running in the lead pack, sitting just behind the 92 of John Ward in 10th. And Cole Fitzpatrick says, good luck, guys. Great broadcast. Certainly appreciate it, Cole. Now the 11 of Dylan Jones gets a little wobbly there as he got down into turn number one. I think that's just all the pushing that Kevin Freeze is doing. And by the way, if you know, you're wanting to keep an eye on that gap that we keep mentioning, keep an eye on that scoring pylon on the left of your screen. Again, as it stands right now, looks like we have 10 cars in this lead pack. We do actually, Jeremy Osborne sticking with it as well. Jason Maines is the first man out of it who currently sits in 12th. And if you look at the gap from 12th to 11th, it's kind of your telltale sign. There you see it about three seconds, maybe a little bit more between Jason Maines and the back bumper of Jeremy Osborne. By the way, good job to Jeremy Osborne. Got himself in this lead pack, and if they can make it on fuel and this thing goes green the rest of the way, he could have a shot at a good payout here at the end of this thing. Well, 13 laps to go now. Dylan Jones continues to lead. We are going to take a quick break, but we'll go side by side so you don't miss a thing. Stick with us. We'll be right back at Talladega. Welcome back to Talladega Super Speedway. Closing in on the end of the action here tonight. Boy, we had a couple developments there over break and a huge moment for the entire front pack as Andrew Navarro went kaboom, blew the engine up in the middle of the pack and was pushing hard and it was working well. Unfortunately, just a little bit unlucky there as you saw the RPMs go up. Temperatures were probably hot and just couldn't quite cool down in time and the engine expired finally on him. And once it did, he got tagged in the back Nowhere to go. Got on the apron, though, and had a phenomenal save again to not get back up into traffic. Hold on to it, and 
keep us under green flag conditions. And as a result, we find ourselves with nine laps to go. And I think a couple different things going on. I think fuel is still a little bit of a concern as a couple of these guys, and I think you definitely, I would say, would have seen get aggressive by now, have chosen to not. And I think the big part of that is just right now they feel like it's going to be a little bit too close on fuel to risk getting aggressive just yet. However, with time, things could certainly change. So single file for the moment. But you saw Dylan Jones and Kevin Freeze fade to the back. There's a good chance. And, uh, yeah, here we go. The cat and mouse game. It's on. That's what this is. Is Everybody's saying, no, 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 you lead. I need to save some fuel. Nobody wants to lead. And, in fact, we look at the speeds for these guys. But they're getting a little bit slower than what we were seeing here tonight. Sure enough, that's the case. And, you know, got to be careful here because when you start to play these games, what happens is that second group, they'll catch up. And when they catch up, they'll get racy. Next thing you know, we get a caution. These guys are involved. It just turns into a mess. So Devin Ray right now, who is five and a half seconds back leading this group. Zach Range, the lead pusher. Jason Maines third. If you're anybody in here, you're communicating right now, guys. Uh, they're saving. We're catching. Go, go, go. It doesn't matter whether or not we can make it on fuel because we're not going to beat them anyway unless we get there. So we'll see how this continues to change. Garrett Maines had had a chance to save for a little bit. So you wonder if he's good enough now to stay out front. But I think guys that might be good to go, I think the one that I feel the most confident with right now, at least in terms of being good to go, has to probably be Matthew Baker because, you know, he's been saving here for quite a while. Led us back to green, but since had fallen back pretty quickly into the pack and Remember, when you're riding around, you're not carrying as much throttle time, and you can afford to save a lot more fuel. The guy in front of you is breaking the draft. But here you see Matthew Baker back to pushing on the back bumper of Garrett Mains. He's He might have just checked. We were looking at his driver cam. I saw him checking some things. Maybe he realized they're good to go and decided, all right, let's not let this lead or this second packer to get back into the mix. Get right back to it here is Ken McCullough Jr., who sits in ninth just behind him, Devin Ray. Well, I say just behind. How about five, almost five and a quarter seconds behind? And that gap is just not closing up quick enough, especially with what's now going to be six laps to go here at Talladega. Again, at what point do the big moves start to be made? And, you know, who makes that move first? Does it come all the way down to a fuel mileage race in terms of nobody makes a move? And it's just who can make it to the line without sputtering? Or do we see one of these groups, or one of the, rather somebody jump out, make that first move, and then everybody try to follow? Notice in the distance now, they are going to be coming up on a couple of lap cars. This could help. And I would not be super shocked here, honestly, if Garrett Maines decides to sit behind these lap cars here for, I don't know, maybe the next three or four laps. Wait till we get either one or two to go and then try to jump out. That way he can save himself a little fuel. I think the rest of the pack might do the same. It's going to be very interesting to watch. As again, Dylan Jones, Kevin Freeze still trying to save some as they had dropped back. J.R. Miller, I think he's been able to save quite a bit so far. And payouts, what they're looking like tonight. We need to take a quick view of those here before we get to the end of this race as well because they're going to be important and how aggressive this thing gets at the end based off 45 inches came up about 10 short so going to be a bit under this but initially what was expected 150 to first 135 to second 120 to third 120 to fourth 100 to fifth and 35 to sixth so again great great payouts here tonight for a 17 dollar entry so you know everybody's going to be going for it at the end is who sean corbett had some trouble there. There's the cam for Joshua Watson. Checking in on him there just briefly. What happened here to Sean Corbett? This was just a moment ago. 45 and the 23 in Ashburn Bella. Ooh, Corbett decides to go to the pits here. And, oh, he just locks it up big time. Yikes. Spins on track. But he's able to initially, looks like for the most part, get it down. So a nice save overall there by Corbett after getting it locked up. Meanwhile, up front, cat and mouse games. They are on. And now the front four are starting to pull away. This is where you got to be careful if you're Joshua McCullough or anybody else back here. If you let these guys get too far ahead, these the, the cars, they get big runs, but you still got to have time to get those runs working. If you run out of time here, you may not have a chance to win it anyway. So J.R. Miller, Kevin Fries working together. They're going to shoot around the five here of Joshua McCullough. It looks like they're clear down, so they'll jump down. There's the three of Christopher McCullough as just in front. Matthew Baker in the four. He's not going to make it. Matthew Baker chooses to pit as, oh, he gets in too hot. We'll have to see if this is a penalty. That's not a good sign for everybody else because I'm telling you, Matthew Baker was one of the guys that I felt like was saving a lot up here. And for him to feel like he was not going to be good to go, Jeff Merkbild with him as well here. 
This is going to get very interesting. Jeff Merck, though, of course, not on the lead lap right now, so keeping an eye here as Baker works his way back out. Didn't get a speeding penalty. I don't know how he got that thing slowed up in time. Nicely done, but now that hands the lead over to Garrett Maines. Followed by John Ward and Logan York all by themselves, at least for the moment. J.R. Miller, Kevin Freeze, Joshua McCullough, Dylan Jones, and Ken McCullough Jr. The next three up on deck. And saw Ken McCullough Jr. there in the pack in the 03. And oh man, a lot of movement right now. J.R. Miller looking for a block there on the 25 of Freeze. But all eyes still up front. Remember, if we get to the white flag, there is no more cautions. Cannot want to run out of fuel now. Oh my goodness, we're going to pull up the dashboard here the rest of the way. And just watch those speeds. If they start sputtering or dropping off at any point, that means somebody's not good to go. In fact, I don't think Garrett's running full throttle right up here. I don't think he is. I mean, 190 with getting full push from John Ward. I'm telling you, that means he is not running full throttle. Now he starts to get back into it, but it's just so close on fuel. We could see someone coast all the way to the finish. J.R. Miller, Kevin Freeze, Dylan Jones have now caught back up. Joshua McCullough, Ken McCullough Jr. trying to do the same. I could not tell you the last time we had a race come down to fuel mileage, but let me tell you something. That is exactly what we are going to get into the trial bowl. Jimmy Emos with trouble, but it's not going to matter. White flag in the air. One lap to go at Talladega. The fuel race is on. Garrett Maine still leading for now. John Ward second. Logan York third. Looking for the first move. It's going to be Kevin Freeze, Dylan Jones, and Ken McCullough Jr. on the outside. We'll see if they duck high on the back. Who's saving? Who's not? Kevin Freeze now. He does look high. Remember, if your car starts sputtering, you can get just a little bit farther. Got to probably make it to just about out of the trial without sputtering to have a shot. Now Freeze is going to look a lane higher. Nothing doing. He'll duck back behind John Ward. Garrett still on the inside getting pushed by Logan York. Final time out of turn four. Watch the speeds. Oh, John Ward up into the air, upside down into the catch fence. The 92 is out of it. It's going to come down to War, excuse me, York versus Maines. York looks like he's out of fuel. Garrett Maines will coast, and he gets the job done on fuel mileage. How about that? Garrett Maines with just enough fuel to stretch it to the end. You hear that car still running for now. You wonder just how close it is. And looks like now he's going to put the clutch in and coast. Wonder if maybe he doesn't have enough to make it all the way around without doing so. Man, oh man. Well, it was an interesting finish for sure. I mean, I don't even know what to say. We had so much go on towards the end there. It was kind of tough to make the call on who had the best shot at it. I certainly didn't think that Garrett was in the best fuel position of anybody in this pack, but it seems like he was just that. And so you hear it sputtering now. So yeah, he certainly didn't have much more, but he had just what he needed. And so here we go. Let's watch first what causes this wreck, which was brutal, by the way. John Ward. I mean, that's one of the worst wrecks that we have seen. 92 got destroyed in this one. All right, so here was the first move. Ward had jumped to the outside. Freeze had worked with him initially, but Freeze took a peak high here. There was nothing doing. Had to duck back down in line. And then here we go. Freeze, I think, is going to take another peak to the top here. And yeah, he does just that. Does Ward try to throw a block? Yeah, looks like he does. And then Freeze gets into his right rear, and there's the contact. 25 gets him up in the air, and then he gets plowed by the 11. Ken McCullough Jr. gets into him, and that takes out everybody except the top three here of Garrett Maines, Logan York, and J.R. Miller. Now, I think, unfortunately for Logan, he just runs out of fuel here right before he's getting ready to make the move. There it is. Starts sputtering, and at that point, he realizes. Looks for a little bit of a block there on J.R., but just wasn't enough. Man, I know Logan's going to be upset with that one. The big opportunity right there. He was in the perfect spot to make a move, but... Just unfortunately ran out of fuel. Here's the, by the way, the chop review for John Ward and Kevin Freeze, the incident between these two. The reason I'm showing this here is I want to show, does, does the 92 drift up? Does the 25 get a little bit of a push that sends him down? Maybe a little bit of both, in fact. Yeah, there's a little bit of both right there. 25 gets up, and I do think Ward is trying to cover... It's close. I think that's just really hard racing on the last lap. Like I said, Ward may be trying to cover, but I think the same time that 
Kevin got shot down just a smidge on the push from Dylan right here. As you're going to see Dylan gets him a little bit offset to the left. But man, that was a brutal, brutal hit here for John Ward. Again, destroying that car. And I don't even know where he ended up finishing after that contact. It's like back in 16th. You saw him get up into the catch fence and get one more angle of this one right here is it's not good. NASCAR not going to be happy about this one. I saw some debris go through the virtual catch fence. Here we go. Here's the initial hit. Gets lifted up. Ken McCullough Jr. tries to drive under it. Unfortunately, not quite able to. Ward goes for, for a full 360. Pinwheels on his nose and then finally comes back to rest on all four. Give you the onboard view of that one. That was certainly... Actually, we're going to get a zoomed-in view of it. I take that back, and then we'll go to the onboard view. As, again, that was one of the most wild wrecks that we have seen in some time here at PGR. This is what it looked like on the onboard here for John Ward. We'll go to the roll bar cam here. Keep everybody planted instead of the gyro. Get you pretty dizzy on this one, but here we go. And there was the margin of victory for Garrett Maines. You know, J.R. Miller, one more lap if they had enough fuel, which they didn't. So I guess I shouldn't say that as if it necessarily mattered, but maybe with a shot. Doesn't matter this time, though. Garrett Maines brings it home. He is your winner here tonight at Talladega. All right, taking a look at the rest of the finishing results. Bringing home second was J.R. Miller. Logan York in third. Joshua McCullough back in fourth with Kevin Fries running at your top five. Matt Lee in sixth. Mike Davenport in seventh. Back in eighth, Dylan Jones, Matthew Baker ninth. And Ken McCullough Jr. running at your top ten. Jason Maines, 11th. Christopher Carter, 12th. Zach Range in 13th. David Sheets, 14th. John Ward, 15th. Devin Ray in 16th. Tony Cox back in 17th with Nash Brambilla in 18th. Jeff Merkin, 19th. And Christopher McCullough running at your top 20. Jeremy Osborne, 21st. Brian Watson in 22nd, Brock Westmill in 23rd, Chuck McClendon in 24th, Sean Corbin in 25th, Jimmy Emos in 26th, Joshua Watson in 27th, Trevor Osinoff in 28th, and Genevaro 29th, and Heath Job running at your top 30. Tyler Vickery 31st, Ron Morris Jr. in 32nd, John Mullahan 33rd, Alex Hill 34th, and Mark Vondell running up the field tonight. He finishes in 35th. All right, we're going to go get your top three in here for interviews. Stay with us. We'll be right back at Talladega. All right, going to start first tonight here with your third place finisher, Logan York. Logan, this is Austin in the booth. You got a copy? I got you, Austin. Well, you come up just short, but not at your causing. Just ran out of fuel there through the trial. Kind of break us down, though. I mean, what was going through your head in those closing laps? It was looked like there was so much going on between everybody trying to save fuel while also trying to gain track position. And what were you thinking there on the back bumper of Garrett Maines with a chance to make the move as you came into the trial? Yeah, um, I didn't really realize how short, how like how close we were until I saw uh, them behind me dropping back. Or I don't remember if they're in front of me or behind me, but I saw them drop to the back of the line. So I was like, maybe I should check my fuel. So then I dropped to the back because I wanted to be in a better spot. Um, in the trial, as you mentioned earlier, I didn't really have much of a choice but to just push Garrett. I, I, I At that point, I knew I was probably going to run out coming to the line, so I was hoping I could uh, maybe block JR for second. And if not, I can get third. And I'm glad, I'm glad I was able to work out. But yeah, I... I would have. I wish I would have paid more attention in math class because I didn't realize I was going to be that short until like the end. Well, nonetheless, you still managed to hold on to a podium, especially with the big wreck out back. But before we let you head out, is there anyone you want to thank or shout out? Yeah, I want to thank my teammate Tucker McClendon. I want to thank you guys for broadcasting. I want to thank everyone that watches these races. I want to thank all the drivers that always show up and make this series possible. Uh, every all the promoters. And that's it. All right, and thank you for talking to us again. Congrats on the third-place finish. We'll see you out here next week. Thank you. All right, and now that'll bring us to your second-place finisher here on the night. On the flip end of that, who was able to stretch the fuel, and that is J.R. Miller. J.R., this is Austin the Booth. Get a copy. 
Yes, sir. Got gotcha. you. Well, you stretched the fuel just long enough, but you also had to miss that last wreck. You kept yourself at the front, though, all night. Tell us a little bit about your race and how you set yourself up for that ending. Uh, you know, I haven't really even driven this car since we did the all the podium stuff. So um, just getting comfortable with it again and just trying to, you know, stay in the lines, try to avoid some of the carnage. Um, actually was able to cycle up front there, you know, after about halfway and made that last pit stop. I knew we were going to be close. And I think all of us were close. So, I mean, I was saving gas before we went to green there and then uh, i think all of us were saving there that last little run so uh yeah i mean I'll, i'm happy with the second i mean i would have liked to get past garrett there but that little contact uh i think freeze got me on the left rear it, it knocked about two three miles an hour off my speed and i didn't have enough to get a run back up to to york to get to garrett so but all in all good night Good night for sure, and a different car than what we're used to seeing. How'd you feel about the racing that it put on tonight? Is it something you want to see more of, less of? How'd you feel about it? Uh, you know, I actually, I don't mind the next gens. Like I said, I just, after doing podium and spending a lot of time in the car, um, I'm just, I'm real comfortable with it. I mean, you just kind of really watch the runs that you get and, and know how to side draft and, uh, you know, just kind of set yourself up to be there at the end like anything else. You did just that tonight. Well, before we let you head out, is there anyone you want to thank or shout out? Yep, thanks. Definitely Mr. Triscaro up there uh, putting these races on. Can't wait to start the Friday night uh, deal tomorrow. Thank you for broadcasting. Throw it. Thank all my PGR teammates, Brock, Mike Davenport, Nash, uh, Tyler is with us tonight. So uh, we miss Michael out on the track, but I know he does a real good job up in race control. So, uh, you know, we just look forward to tomorrow night. And then, you know, we start on Kenny's. Uh, little big dog, little dog thing on Saturday. So see what we can do with that. Absolutely. And again, thank you for talking to us. Congrats on the second place finish, and we'll see you next week. All right, 10-4, bud. All right, and now that's going to bring us to your race winner here tonight, Garrett Maines. Garrett, this is Austin in the booth. Got a copy? Yes, sir. Well, you win it on fuel mileage. Don't know the last time we were saying that in terms of in a PGR race, but, man, how did you manage to stretch it further than anybody else there, especially when we saw you leading as much as you were there towards the end? Well, I definitely got to give a shout out to Matthew Baker. I don't know what happened. Uh, I wasn't like in uh, comms with him, but he was up there leading the pack and we were making some serious pace and kind of drove away from all the other people that needed to save. So um, inadvertently, he kind of took us on a different strategy. And um, I don't remember when it was that I got cycled from the lead. I think it was when he came by. Um, then there was another wave with um, Kevin and Dylan and I think Andrew, the, those top three. So once I got cycled out of the lead and I was able to like file in in a position that was, you know, far enough in the pack to be able to save, I just, I was able to sit in a good position for a very long time and we didn't, we were going fast in the process. So it really worked out um, well for me. And when I got out front, which was not voluntary, um, I was right on the number and I just kept my mouth shut and let, let it all unfold and see, you know, where it took me. Cause I wasn't sure like, is that on the number to sputter and get screwed? Or is this like, you know, can I go for it? And I didn't know where anybody else was. Everybody was screwing around with, uh, where they were actually at. Logan's like, I got half a lap to the good bro sputtering through the trial, but I didn't know what to think. So, uh, definitely was a little, little nervous out front there coming to the, uh, checkered, but we were able to get it done. I saw that wreck in turn three. I thought Kevin was going to get us there, but definitely uh, got lucky tonight. I felt like, you know, there's not much you can do as the leader in the next gens, but to have it unfold that way is kind of best case scenario for the leader, unfortunately. I, I will take it how I can get it, and it's not very often you actually talk to me winning these races. I think they went through the stats, and I have the most podiums, but I have nowhere near the most wins, so it's nice to to actually close the deal. Yeah, well, it was a chaotic finish in its own way tonight. You do get the job done, but, you know, we saw strategy late, a lot of racing early, and for the people at home, we were kind of trying to explain a little bit about what we saw with the domination between you, Baker, Kevin, and a couple others when you guys were lined up on the top, and how is it that in this car versus any other series, when you've got a good group up there, you can control everybody else so good? Well, I when Baker got out front, I was not going to contest that because... You you need like P 
people that know what they're doing in certain positions. And he was doing a great job leading. He was taking the cues that I was giving him on when to come down to side draft. And Kevin was playing an excellent role in third, um, third in line. And we were just able to do what we needed to do to stay up there. And, you know, it was one of those situations where we just didn't want to fall out of controlling positions. Like it's very hard to do that at Dega. It, it, essentially there's always going to be a loser in that situation. Somebody will get picked off eventually. And that was Kevin. I mean, that it, it happens, but somebody made a mistake and Kevin got right back up there with us. So it was really nice to be able to, uh, you know, have that trio going there for a while. And, you know, it, it didn't really work out for pit stops. I felt bad for Baker because I, you know, I wanted to continue that. I was just like, I'll pit with you, you know. Um, as soon as he said he was low on fuel, I was like, oh, shoot, that's going to be too early. I can't get down. And Kevin was getting side drafted by uh, by Matt Lee. So he wasn't able to, to push me clear. And we were just kind of in a bad spot. And we had the caution that really broke everything up and kind of set this up for a fuel race. But, you know, overall, it was a really fun race. I Coming into this, I'm not a fan of next gen here. So this this was actually enjoyable, and I, I hope everybody else had a good time with it. I know the fuel race isn't ideal, but like before that, it was a blast. So shout out to uh, you know all the guys that helped make this happen. It was a ton of fun, and hopefully uh, we'll be back next week. Absolutely. Well, before we let you head out, go celebrate in Victory Lane. Is there anyone else you'd like to thank or shout out? Yeah, absolutely. Got to give a huge shout out to uh, MCU Body Linux. Uh, all the guys at Ryko Performance. Also, shout out Kevin there. Um, great racing with him. And um, big thank you to Left Court Brothers and FGRXL for their support as well. Thank you for talking to us as well. All right. Well, congrats again on the win. And hopefully we'll see you out here maybe for a chance at back-to-back -back next week. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. There you go. Garrett Mains gets the job done. Now, interestingly enough, I was sitting here thinking while well, this was happening that that whole time, I thought Matthew Baker was actually one of the guys who was the best on fuel based off how long it felt like we had saw him save, but certainly was not the case. And Garrett was the man who was on the winning end of it tonight. But I agree with everything you said. The racing that it provided early, while it got a little chaotic, we had a couple cautions, was phenomenal. A lot of aggression kind of gives you that feeling as a driver that you can constantly be racing even when you still have, you know, say 25, 30 laps to go. And then a little bit of fuel strategy to change things up, something we don't normally see there at the end. Trouble as it was, that's going to do it here tonight. We will be back next week. Make sure you stay tuned for that with the PGR Intimidator Super Speedway Series. As for tonight, that'll do it for me, Austin Green, here on Ghost Racing Network. Thank you all so much for coming out. As always, I hope you enjoyed. And until next time, have a good night.